Global security in the 21st century will continue to be threatened by the conflict of wills amongst major nation states. Additionally, the will and the means to generate mass violence and disruption have been distributed to small states, ethnic groups, and transnational movements. The United States and its coalition allies must be prepared to respond decisively by force in key areas of the world where these potential threats lie, many of which are surrounded by countries with anti-access policy and are at great distances from established intermediate support bases. War fighting concepts developed by the joint forces of the United States have focused on the means by which future forces can successfully conduct joint forcible entry operations in these potential areas of conflict. Partnering with industry, they have produced innovations in command and control, sense and respond logistics, transfer technologies, and platform design, resulting in the transformation of our nation's warfighting capability in the 21st century. The introduction of tilt rotor technology, such as the MV-22 and the Eagle Eye unmanned aerial vehicle in particular, has dramatically changed how future joint forces will conduct missions. Building on the advantages and versatility of these existing tilt rotor aircraft, Bell Helicopter has developed the quad tilt rotor. With a fuselage and cargo capacity greater than a C-130, the quad tilt rotor can internally load up to eight 463L pallets. Cruising at a speed of 280 knots, it has a 2100 nautical mile range and is self-deployable from the U.S. continent, allowing it to not only self-deploy, but ease some of the strain on the already taxed strategic lift assets. With its inherent ability to transfer up to 20 tons internally in vertical takeoff and landing, the quad tilt rotor will become the preferred, if not the only, means to convey heavy logistics and armored assets to expeditionary airfields, sea bases, or directly to the objective. Specific features and benefits of the quad tilt rotor can be best illustrated in the following scenario used by joint forces to help define future standing joint task force forcible entry capabilities. The scenario takes place in the year 2018 and centers around a provincial governor of Indonesia who has overthrown the existing government and formed an extremist Islamic State. In addition to consolidating the former Indonesian Defense Forces, the newly formed Caliphate of Ibn Andar has offered a safe harbor for the region's many pirates. With the threat of closure of the Strait of Malacca and the subsequent disruption of maritime trade, the international community is quick to form a coalition task force to respond to the immediate threat. From the start, the operation is hindered by nearby Singapore's and Malaysia's denial of the use of airfields and ports for fear of retribution by internal factions sympathetic to the cause of the newly formed caliphate and the presence of significant offensive land-based missiles located on islands within striking distance of population centers. To put the foot in the door, before the caliphate defense forces can bring all their anti-access strategies to bear, coalition forces must quickly seize lodgments with sufficient force to enable larger, follow-on forces to conduct sustained operations against the enemy. Forward presence marks the first phase of the operation. Early on, Air Force and Army QTR squadrons significantly contribute to the flow-in of troops by transiting troops of Task Force Green and critical cargo from an intermediate support base in Okinawa and from the U.S. continent to the 3rd Army Regional Flotilla. Originating from Guam, the flotilla contains the heavy support and logistical assets of the Army Task Force and is en route to form with the sea base in the joint area of operations. At the same time, U.S. Marine squadrons of quad tilt rotors self-deploy with the 1st Marine Aircraft Wing from Iwakuni, Japan, to the MPFF ships of the sea base. Without access to an airfield in the immediate area of operations, the vertical lift-capable assets of the wing rely on the deck space of the sea base. The QTRs provide immediate tactical aerial refueling of MAW assets while they conduct interdiction missions. The next phase, Joint Advanced Force Operation, consists of delaying, disrupting, and neutralizing select enemy ground units. Most of the quad tilt rotor squadrons continue to assist in the flow-in of troops and assets that started in the previous phase. Two AFSOC QTR squadrons, however, provide assault support for the security element of a Special Operations Raid Force from Task Force Green. With a mission of securing a perimeter around the raid objective, future combat systems vehicles transported within the quad tilt rotors can land within two terrain features of the objective and provide mobile firepower as the assault element of the raid force completes its mission. Additionally, Marine quad tilt rotors continue to provide tactical aerial refuel support to the Marine Aircraft Wing Interdiction Mission Forces in the MAB area of operations. 
When sufficient assets have converged to the joint area of operations, coalition forces advance to the assault phase and seek to defeat enemy forces in key areas in order to enable the uninterrupted flow of follow-on forces by both surface and air means. Specifically, quad tilt rotors provide assault support to Task Force Green in the seizure of an airfield at Regnot. Six squadrons working around the clock convey the bulk of the Striker Brigade to within two terrain features of the objective. Once on the ground, the vehicles are refueled by quad tilt rotors that provide responsive forward arming and refueling points in the objective area. At the same time, the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Brigade launches both surface and air assaults in the vicinity of Tiku. In this case, quad tilt rotors are critical in conveying engineer equipment to the objective, where they will be engaged in building an expeditionary airfield and port. Additionally, the QTRs will establish a forward arming and refueling point deep inland in support of the MEB's aviation assets. Once the lodgements have been seized, the Coalition Task Force proceeds to the enabling decisive operations phase. For assault forces to secure current objectives or move on to new ones, an enormous amount of sustainment is required. Both the Army Striker Brigade and the Marine Expeditionary Brigade will require resupply in excess of 2,000 tons per day in order to sustain operations up to 225 nautical miles inland. To meet this requirement, the national imperative of conducting future joint forcible entry operations via sea base requires the parallel design of platforms, air connectors, and interoperable payloads. While the quad tilt rotor will have the lift capacity, speed, and range to deliver sustainment to future expeditionary forces, it is equally important that MPFF and Army flotilla ship designs are embedded with efficient transfer technologies that facilitate the timely cycle of sorties. Finally, the Coalition Task Force proceeds to the transition phase of operations. At this point, the expeditionary assets of the force, including the quad tilt rotors, reconstitute to the sea base or intermediate support bases, while the heavier U.S. base units that have recently arrived conduct follow-on missions. Only by pushing the envelope in speed, range, and payload capacity can future joint forces successfully conduct forcible entry operations over the horizon from mobile MPFF or Army flotilla shipping. As it has in the 20th century, Bell Helicopter will continue to develop innovative vertical lift technologies such as the quad tilt rotor well into the 21st century to meet this demand and offer a wide array of new mission capabilities to support future forces of the United States and its transformational warfighting concepts as well as provide expanded applications to the commercial airline sector.